Hey, in this video I'm going to explain how to blur this background image here but without blurring the text and content inside. So um, what people often do in this situation is try and uh, add initially just add a blur to the same container that has the background image. So to begin with let's just select that um, and I'm going to give you a trick for finding background images because sometimes when you've got elements nested inside each other it's hard to see exact, exactly which element has the background image. So I'm opening these <coughs> inspection tools here. I've got the computer tab open, which shows me the computer CSS. And I've expanded the background options. And I'm looking at this uh, this bit here. And so this element I've selected, even though it covers the same space as the background image, doesn't actually have the background image set. So let's move up to a container element. So if I up to the parents, I'll click this option here. And then we can see there's something, there's an actual value here for the background image. Okay, so what, um, and you can see I've got, because I've added this background image in Microsoft, you can see the settings here. So to try and set a blur, you could go to the filter options and uh, let's set a blur like so. Uh, but you can see all the text is blurred as well. Okay, so we don't want that. So um, a solution to this is instead of setting the background image on this element here, so I'll just remove this, um, what we do is we, we create a, a pseudo element. Uh, for this uh, container element. And a pseudo element is basically just a way of creating an element in CSS. It's not, it's like a HTML element, but it doesn't actually exist in the HTML like this element does here. Um, and then what you do is you, so you create the element with CSS, <coughs> with CSS, and then you apply some styling to it with CSS. So what I'm going to do is create a pseudo element by, um, because I've already created a selector for this container element, what I do is I use this option to create an additional selector. Um, which essentially targets the same thing. Let me just create a little bit more space here. So you can see these options. Um, and then uh, the default option, we could create exactly the same selectors we've got here. But uh, if we go to this show um, selector modifiers option, we can create pseudo elements here using this menu. So I'm going to choose the before one. Um, and what that means is it, it will uh, insert an element before the content inside this div. Let's say before the regular HTML content, so like around here. Um, and I'm going to give it uh, a slightly better name. I'm going to call it container before. Container before and save that. And then, uh, actually, before I, I do this, I'm just going to go back to the, uh, where is it here? Um, go back to this container. And what we need to do, because we're going to position this um, before pseudo element um, to fill the full width of this area, um, we don't want it to have an effect by knocking the content down. Um, we want to set its position to absolute, um, but when you do that, what you want to do is on the container element, the regular one without the before bit, you want to set position relative if it's not set already. It might be set already, which is shown here in the computed value, but if it wasn't, we just set that. And then when we go to our container before, I'm just going to move this up here so it's next to it, so it's easy to switch between the two. Then we're going to set the position to absolute what that means is it's essentially taken out of the flow of the document, which means um, when we position it, it won't push this heading down. So if we set the height to 100%, if it wasn't taken out of the flow of the document, it would push all the content down. But by setting position absolute, it's positioned independently of everything else. Okay. Uh, so then uh, we're going to set... Um, oh, and uh, another crucial thing actually with um, before elements is you need to set a value for the content property which is in the behavior group and you can just set um, a, sp uh, to a quote single quotes or double quotes just with a space so you don't actually because we don't want any actual text to appear in this case so you can just set an empty string but we we'll use two quotes for that uh, and then um, and by default it won't have any width at all um, or height so we need to explicitly set that so let's go to the dimensions and set the width to a hundred percent and the height to a hundred percent um, now we still can't see anything because we haven't set the background image yet. So let's go and do that. And I'm going to choose one because I've already set one. I'm going to choose this. And now that appears. Now it's actually appeared over the top of all of our content. Um, but that's because, um, that's just to do with the absolute position. There's, there's layering. So, um, by default, it's appeared over the top. But if we go to the position properties and set the Z index to minus one, then it'll appear behind it. Okay. And then, uh, all that's left to do is add our blur effect to this. And because there's nothing actually inside this um, before element, uh, all the content is inside the regular element. If we set the blur 
um, we can just blur that. <clears throat> in the background, it doesn't blur the text. Okay, um, and then uh, you can do a little one or a lot. It's, the text's a bit easier to read when it's more blurred. Um, or you could also, while you're here, you could set something like uh, 0.5 opacity or something to make the text more readable. Uh, yeah, so <clears throat> I hope that helps. Uh, thanks for watching.